uh, to to have this opportunity to present uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, Jin and I many years <laughs> friends, and uh, it's really a pressure. Uh, so um, anyway, this is my disclosure. I consulting for CROs and have my own startups. Uh, so yeah, let me start with acknowledge. You know, uh, my lab. Uh, you know, a uh, couple. Uh, uh, junior faculty, actually, Xinhua is a junior faculty now. Uh, and then Wang Kai, he graduated. Uh, Chen Yang is a current PhD student. Uh, they did most of the work I present on the ultra high field. And the collaborators, uh, especially Bill Rooney, uh, you know, he provide generously provided many slides on the uh, BSC, DCE at the ultra high field, as well as funding support. Um, you know, uh, this is our lab, uh, Laboratory of Functional MI Technology. Uh, I'm very fortunate uh, to uh, have a very dedicated uh, fun lab. Uh, this uh, throughout the pandemic, you know, this is, uh, we did 2021. So it's end of 2020, uh, at the peak of the pandemic. <laughs> Uh, each year we had a new year party and that year was a virtue and we had a, a selfie context. Uh, so, uh, you know, today uh, when I uh, discuss with Jing, uh, you know, we've been in pandemic three years and uh, just starting to get in person. Uh, so we've all uh, had enough Zoom meetings, you know, <laughs> it's always, I give the lecture and then, you know, you answer questions or maybe you listen. It's always one way communication. Uh, so this, uh, I try to make a little adjustment uh, to uh, make it more interactive, uh, two way. Uh, so today, actually, you know, during the talk, I will also ask you questions, not at the end. <laughs> during the talk, I will ask you questions. And uh, uh, so we are making our, uh, you know, loft t-shirt, uh, redo it, custom make uh, again, you know, with different color and size. So, uh, you know, for people who give correct answers, we'll send you a loft t-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, starting, uh, I'm at the University of Southern California. So our institute is called Stevens Neuroimaging and Informatics Institute. Uh, so we are the first uh, one in North America to install uh, 70 Terra, uh, which is the first uh, FDA approved uh, ultra high magnetic uh, uh, system. And we also have a, a 3D Prisma, so it's a 10T package. Uh, subsequently, we also uh, obtained the ACR accred accreditation for ultra high field neuroimaging. Uh, and uh, um, I will start with ASL because you know this is the uh, majority of our work. Uh, so uh, we started this work actually very early, you know, as early as 20 years ago, uh, throughout um, like a course of 20 years, we worked with different institutions. Uh, including CMRR. Um, so we get some data until we have our own scanner. And um, of course, you know, uh, the promise of ASL is uh, huge uh, for ultra high field because you have the due benefit uh, of high SNR, which is actually uh, now the literature supports B0 to the 1.65 instead of linear scaling with B0. And also your blood T1, which determine the uh, half-life of blood, uh, labeled blood is also above two seconds. So when you combine, you know, you see a, a tremendous, uh, you know, gain, almost uh, exponential gain uh, with few strengths. Uh, for example, you know, if you move from 3T to 70, uh, you get more than three times uh, SNR gain. Uh, so I'm very glad, you know, when we did the, the um, uh, simulation, you know, we didn't stop at 370, uh, sorry, 70 is here. Uh, actually, you know, now uh, 70 is the entry level of ultra high field. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so my first question to the audience is, uh, what's the highest field strength of uh, active ultra high field human uh, MI system? You can put it in the chat box and the train will monitor it. Yeah. 
So, for example, you know, we did uh, this uh, initial, um, you know, turbo flash based ASL at 3T and 7T. Uh, we are almost can reach sub millimeter implant resolution. Yeah. Um, you know, the, of course, you know, <laughs> the picture is beautiful. Uh, but the reality is uh, not so <laughs> glamorous. Uh, you know, you, you're always facing this uh, B1, B0 inhomogeneity. And uh, this is the typical uh, B1, B0 map. Uh, we obtain our 70. Uh, you know, for example, this is one PPM field inhomogeneity, which is pretty good already. But it's 300 hertz at 70. You know, it's only 128 hertz at uh, uh, 3T. And for B B1, you know, you drop uh, dramatically. Uh, you know, from the center of the brain. Uh, when you get to the brainstem, it's 30 percent. Uh, you know, definitely uh, around 50 percent where we label. Um, you know, also you're facing the higher SAR uh, shot to T2 relaxation, limited coil coverage. So we start with post ASL. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's a little easier, uh, size lower. Uh, so we, uh, you know, we define, this is a uh, graduate student one class work. Uh, we define a loss function, basically, uh, you know, combine the labeling efficiency and also the uh, kind of uniform uh, flat, uh, kind of how how flat this inversion band it is because you know if you have a slice profile then you know it could easily overwhelm uh, the uh, ASL signal uh, which is very small. Uh, so we compared for a very common uh, adiabatic pulse, for example, HS four psi, TI four psi, and the worst. Yeah. So uh, so here comes my second question. Uh, who can tell me what are uh, TI for psi and the worst? Uh, you can start Google now. Um, so this is actually our uh, inversion profile on a, a gel fountain. So uh, you can see actually, uh, surprisingly, we get a better profile uh, with HS and the worst. So this is psi normalized, this is the peak B1 normalized. Uh, TI foresight, you know, surprisingly, because, you know, it was uh, kind of uh, custom designed, optimized for high, ultra high field, uh, didn't give us very optimal results. And this is in vivo. Um, you can see, you know, uh, so actually our finding was the worst uh, is actually the best. Uh, so uh, I think of one of the, uh, kind of controversy in the field is um, I think the TI foresight when uh, when it was designed uh, we, we look at the literature it didn't really uh, taking care of the B0 inhomogeneity so we feel you know when uh, the B0 field variation is uh, small uh, with relatively narrow coverage I think the TI foresight is good uh, but worst is more suitable for wide coverage of the ultra high fit, and it's it's cheap. Uh, it's very easy uh, to uh, implement, uh, and uh, you know there's uh, no patent on this. Uh, and uh, then you know we uh, moved on to uh, optimization of Picasso. So Picasso, you know, uh, there's many uh, different approach uh, as I summarize. So the earlier ones, you know, people have been really using dielectric pads and the uh, adjust of labeling location. This is a very uh, straightforward approach. And the, uh, other groups has been using uh, pre-collaboration of B0 offset at the labeling location, tries to face correction. Um, and then more recently, uh, you know, using of the PTX technology, right? So uh, try to improve the B1 in ho uh, homogeneity as well as uh, intensity. And uh, uh, finally, uh, our group has been really uh, optimizing the labeling parameters. Uh, so uh, for example, you know, this is a study actually by our group uh, in 2015. Um, so this uh, shows you, uh, you know, uh, we put dielectric pads uh, under the net, uh, under the neck of the uh, subjects. 
Uh, and this is the labeling plane. Actually, it should be a little higher. Um, and uh, uh, we have a, a shimming box includes both the imaging region and the, the uh, labeling plane for set out the shimming. Um, with a, a relatively short labeling offset is 75 millimeter, you know, instead of 90 or 100 uh, at the 3 t uh, This is our image uh, with uh, reasonable uh, quality with uh, uh, SMS uh, TFL readout. Um, so we actually uh, have been uh, trying to find the optimal labeling location. Uh, based on time of flight, uh, you know, and my angiograph. So we found out that this location is relatively optimal. It's uh, just below the fork of the uh, vertebral artery joining the basilar artery. And the, uh, you will see actually the uh, B1 and the B0 map. Uh, they have uh, relatively, B1 can reach about 70%. Uh, B0 is uh, I think it's uh, you know less than 100 hertz, uh, positive and negative, which is uh, relatively tolerable for us. Um, and uh, we uh, highly recommend you use the PTX coil. Um, you know, even with the same uh, circular polarized setup, just because that coil coverage is uh, a little uh, deeper uh, into the neck region. Um, this is, uh, uh, you know, an, 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 uh, an NIH group uh, headed by Lalis uh, Gala. Uh, so they actually, and also uh, initially by Dr. Wenming Lu, uh, they have been really trying to pre-calibrate the B0 offset of Picasso. So they, um, you know, basically do a few map, uh, get the face offset of the labeling, three labeling arteries, and then, uh, Pre adjust the uh, Picasso pulse sequence. Uh, so, this is after calibration. Uh, this is before so you're seeing a, a dramatic signal gain uh, and also uh, signal homogeneity. So, uh, of course, you know the drawback is you, you have to do the pre scan. Um, our uh, approach, you know, instead of trying to um, Trying to measure it, we are trying to make the uh, Picasso sequence more robust to feel the inhomogeneity effects. Uh, so we have been really doing a lot of simulations, uh, try to uh, you know give uh, different B1 amplitude and a different B0 offset. So intuitively, you can imagine, you know, you. Um, you, in, you of course, you want to get a higher B1. Um, so the higher B1, of course, the more tolerance to uh, B0 offset. And also, you know, you try to make the, uh, the pulse gap as short as possible because that will uh, minimize the face error, face accrual error between the pulse. Um, so we, uh, what our results shows is basically you need to use a very uh, short, um, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, this is the shortest uh, we can implement uh, on our scanner with a 300 microseconds uh, for the duration and 250 for the gap. Uh, so um, this is our image. Uh, so basically, you know, we, um, we don't measure anything. We just basically uh, choose the optimal labeling plane. Then uh, we use the optimal um, parameters. And we, we tried several different setups. So the CP mode is basically simulates um, circular polarized, like a single coil. Um, but we also use the PTX, try to uh, individual, in each individual subject, we try to kind of maximize the B1 at the labeling location, and also uh, try to minimize the field uh, inhomogeneity. Um, but then, you know, this takes a little longer for each subject. So we also tried a uni, uni, <coughs> universal kind of, not universal pulse, but universal shimming, uh, universal shimming weights uh, based on about 10 subjects. So you can see actually the, uh, the CP is pretty good already. And uh, if you do the individual B1 shimming, you push another 10%. Um, not much different between the universal. 
uh, Shiming. So, uh, and we can reach a very reasonable test retest. Uh, this is on the different days. Uh, so we, if you're interested, look up our my paper last year. Uh, it actually, uh, we, we, we give all the, maybe around five, six subjects, we give everybody's uh, image in appendix. Um, you know, this, uh, we also, because it start to getting uh, more reliable without pre-calibration, we've giving out sequence to a few sites. Uh, this is actually, we acquired it in Beijing. Um, so they, uh, this is a stenosis patient. So obviously, you know, uh, you can see a lower on the uh, right side. Uh, there's a little bit of interference on the lower slice just because, you know, we're raising the labeling plane. Um, so it gets closer to the uh, base of the brain and then sometimes it causes interference. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, so you, um, you have to be uh, very careful uh, at the 70, not only uh, about the Picasso labeling, but also about the background suppression, uh, because, you know, um, with uh, B1, B0 inhomogeneity, you're not going to get 100% or even 90% the labeling, if, uh, the inversion efficiency. Uh, if you uh, use the original HS pass uh, without any other adjustment, your inversion efficiency is only 77% with a large uh, CV across the uh, brain. And so we actually, uh, you know, uh, another graduate student, Chen Yang, uh, has been really uh, optimizing, um, you know, HS worst. And we also um, worked with, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, Rudolf uh, Stuberg's group uh, in Austria, they designed this optimum pulse, which is a free form of um, um, kind of non-selective inversion pulse um, based on, you know, uh, given B1 and the B0 in homogeneity. Uh, the, the advantage of this pulse is it's shorter but uh, uh, it's a size a little higher. Uh, so with this pulse, once you optimize, they can reach about 85% labeling if, uh, inversion efficiency, uh, around 10% uh, in homogeneity. Um, optimum pulse is the best in terms of both inversion efficiency and also CV, but the size is higher. Uh, so um, you have to be, Anyway, you have to be really careful uh, about each step. And um, really the background suppression pulse is very expensive uh, at the 70, I would say, because you lost the 20% of the signal. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, readout, it's also very tricky uh, because, you know, um, uh, the T2 is much shorter, T2 star is much shorter, and you don't have a lot of time uh, for image readout. Uh, if you use the uh, 3D grace, which is our uh, workhorse sequence at 3T, uh, you really have to accelerate very aggressively. Uh, this is Xinhuang's work. He actually needs to accelerate 12 times uh, with a kind of cap 2D cap kind of pattern, then use TGV regularized reconstruction. So um, uh, it works. Uh, but not every time. Um, and uh, uh, so we also played with uh, 2D SMS um, Turbo Fresh. Uh, this gives you reasonable results. Um, yeah. Um, so our favorite has been uh, Turbo Fresh at the 70 because uh, it's low distortion, uh, very short TE. Uh, so yeah, so recently uh, we've just gotten uh, this 3D uh, TFL working with background suppression um, and the Picasso at the 70. Uh, this is in plane two by two, through plane still four millimeters. So this one, I think, you know, we feel it's the best kind of white paper 3D Picasso version at 70. Um, uh, Based on our experience, uh, you can see uh, wide matter perfusion. Uh, you can literally see it. Um, you can see the orbital frontal cortex uh, without distortion because it's TFL. Uh, you can see some fine uh, structures like a choropraxy. 
uh, and also uh, the gyra saw size. So we feel uh, we're further optimizing this. Um, ideally, we want to reach isotropic two by two by two, uh, but this is, I feel, you know, clinically will be um, very useful. Um, and uh, um, so I want to spend um, a few minutes on the PTX. You know, uh, I think this is a major technology uh, for us to tackle the field inhomogeneity, B1 field inhomogeneity effects at ultra high field. Uh, this is just shows you, you know, using the diff by default the uh, single transmitter single transmitter coil. Uh, you see a large uh, field inhomogeneity effects uh, due to the dielectric effects. And it's actually a slightly already better uh, just by using the PTX coil uh, with what we call true form is basically a simulated CP mode. And then, you know, if you can pick your uh, region to do shimming, uh, that will be even better. And uh, uh, this is individual subject based, uh, the whole brain. So essentially, you know, um, you are getting better uh, field of homogeneity uh, at the price of the SAR. Um, and uh, uh, this just shows you, you know, the coverage improvement with MP rage. Um, so we have been generally using this since it's a balance between, you know, uh, uh, the field of homogeneity and also the cost in terms of time and uh, so. Um, so what else you can do with PDX, right? You know, um, you know, our student has been playing with it. Uh, we can uh, make uh, images <laughs> for Christmas. Uh, the stockings and the uh, Christmas tree, and the, uh, you can make a tiger for the Chinese New Year. Yeah. So, um, besides entertainment, uh, what else you can do with PDX? Um, so uh, we thought about it. Uh, one of the uh, you know technology that is uh, very fancy in SL as you can do vessel selective labeling using this uh, cool technology of uh, super selective ASL. Um, so, um, but super selective ASL also has its drawbacks. Um, so here's uh, my third question. Uh, who can tell me uh, what is super selective uh, PCAS? Uh, you can put it in the chat box. Um, so, uh, essentially, you know, um, uh, with, with the super selective, you lose a little bit of labeling efficiency. And uh, a lot of time you don't uh, achieve uh, super selectivity uh, due to the uh, interference of the other uh, uh, vessels. So uh, what we try to do is we try to combine uh, the, 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 the selectivity of the B1 field uh, and they try to enhance the labeled region while we suppress uh, the un unlabeled region, uh, vessels. So this is actually we're targeting the vessel artery. Um, you probably cannot see very clearly, it's actually a little brighter when we uh, try to enhance uh, the vessel artery while suppress the rest. Uh, the cost of function is essentially, you know, we try to boost as much as uh, the labeled B1 while suppressed the unlabeled B1. Uh, so left and the right is a little easier because Vesla is right in the center. So it's not much we can do uh, with a channel. Um, you can do left to right, uh, then, you know, the CP mode, you don't have any selectivity. Um, but with if you select the right one, you know you have the dark band right through the left one. Uh, so uh, vice versa, if you select the left one, you have a, a you know artificially generated a dark band through the left one. So um, we can play with this uh, to try to enhance the selectivity. Um, for example, you know this is uh, the the default uh, super selective. Uh, with our uh, enhanced uh, B1, uh, you, you can see it's actually the 
as an increase of 50% uh, the, of the labeled region while the unlabeled region gets uh, suppressed slightly, uh, vice versa if you uh, label left and uh, you can label the posterior, uh, the enhancement is 10% only, um, but you still get a little benefit uh, by surprising uh, the rest. So um, yeah, so this is actually, um, you know, uh, basically we, we did the two subjects. Uh, we're going to do more um, with, with this technology. Uh, you can enhance the selectivity uh, of, uh, of vessel selective ASL uh, with uh, you know uh, B1 shimming, not B1 shimming, but uh, <coughs> yeah, PTX technology, um, and uh, um, yeah. So, so another uh, kind of um, way we have been thinking is really you know for seventy, um, a lot of people are very fascinated about the laminar um, imaging with FMI. Uh, we have been really pushing uh, the laminar perfusion imaging uh, by uh, using zoom the grace. So essentially, you are, uh, try to just uh, um, image a selective region of the cortex, uh, then you can do very high resolution. Uh, this is mainly uh, Xing Meng's work that you, uh, he published last year. As a one of the, um, you know, instead of trying to kind of using very fancy PTX technology, we just basically, we apply the labeling region uh, within the brain um, above the circle willis. So you kind of uh, oblique uh, cut through uh, AC, MC, and the PC. So you actually can cut label three uh, main uh, intracranial vessels together. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, the, the benefit is one is because, you know, this is a sweet spot for B1, B0 at 70. Uh, and you're very close to your uh, imaging volume. So reduce the transit time. And also, you know, because the flow velocity is lower, you can use a small flip angle to reduce SAR. Um, yeah, so this would uh, just, you know, I, I just want to show you guys, um, the raw unfiltered <laughs> images without any deep learning. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, we did a, a different post-labeling delay. You know, this is the motor cortex. This is the visual. You can see the coverage and the, the image quality, you know, just to kind of uh, see the provision align with the ribbon. Uh, and the, uh, of the cortex uh, very nicely. And initially you have these small dots, which we believe is the pure arteries, uh, and it gets disappear into more homogeneous perfusion pattern. Same for uh, visual cortex. Um, and you can do activation, you know, this is basically just subtraction without any statistics. Um, yeah, so uh, you can see this is just subtraction of this omega uh, hand and knob, uh, as well as, you know, sensory mode, pre mode, uh, super SMAs. Uh, very nice uh, without the statistic uh, analysis. Um, for example, visual as same, uh, you will see the early visual cortex uh, very nicely. Uh, and uh, uh, so this is actually, you know, our analysis. So with, uh, this is the profile. Uh, you, you get at a 500, uh, 1,000 millisecond and 1,500 millisecond. So earlier uh, delay, uh, you will see more uh, pure signal uh, while it's shifting into the deeper uh, layers. Uh, so the, uh, this is the fitted uh, transit time at the, uh, so, so the surface, pure surface is a little shorter. It's 900 while the cortex maybe is uh, 1,000 milliseconds. And this is CBF profile. So we look up a literature. This is the hist histogram, uh, historic kind of analysis of vascular network density on the uh, human specimen. Uh, so this is motor cortex. You will see almost a very nice match with the uh, historic analysis. 
Um, similarly for uh, visual, uh, so the visual seems uh, shift a little deeper uh, into the peak, a little bit deeper into the uh, cortex. Again, you know, it uh, matches the literature in terms of the uh, historic uh, analysis very well. Um, yeah, so how about activation? Uh, so uh, I think, again, you know, Xinhan did a lot of very nice analysis. Um, we did a, a few tasks, two tasks, basically. One is the rest, uh, one is the uh, finger brushing, uh, one is the finger tapping. Uh, so brushing is basically just you feel the brush, uh, while finger tapping, you need a you know, simultaneous uh, program uh, and get feedback of the sensation. So you actually, uh, you know, if you read uh, Randall Huber's paper, uh, so the, the, the finger tapping should be double peak. Uh, you can literally see it uh, while finger brushing is mostly sensory. So it's more um, superficial layers. Um, not the deep ones. Uh, so yeah, exactly that's what we observed. Uh, finger tapping is double peak. Uh, brushing is, you know, primary one peak in the superficial layers. Uh, if you look at both, it's trended towards the peel surface because you're just because the peel vein is uh, well known. Uh, but you, you can also barely see a two peak pattern. Um, because we use T2, uh, this is a grace, so it's T2 bold. Um, so it's, it has uh, more specificity than the uh, gradient echo bold. Uh, the, the signal change, uh, surprisingly, is very large, it's above 100%. Um, so just to give you an idea, this is, just shows you how uh, you know, how the high resolution is important uh, to just to see the uh, changes because when you're, uh, you know, our commonly two, three millimeter, you're really uh, partial volume averaging and you get 50% signal change. Um, and the uh, visual, similarly, uh, you know, we, um, this is the rest. Uh, so the uh, hypothesis was, you know, feed forward uh, just by looking at the visual stimulation. You're uh, basically the the feed forward signal ends in the um, first layer. Um, so um, while the feedback, you know, with attention uh, from a higher visual cortex is mostly superficial in the deep layer. So that's exactly what we observed. We have the attention um, modulated signal, which actually shows two peak, uh, a smaller one in the superficial and a, uh, you know, a primary one in the uh, deep layers. Um, okay, so uh, our recent work actually also collab with Jane is we really try to uh, combine you know, the ASL uh, with VASO and then also with BOLD uh, together. So we can get multiple contrasts together. Uh, so we then we can derive a metabolic uh, CMRO2 change during activation. So the idea is actually, um, you know, very simple. Uh, we, at the ultra high field, we use one uh, inversion pulse instead of two or more uh, for background suppression, because as I explained to you, it's very expensive. Um, but uh, with one uh, background inversion, non-selective background inversion pulse, uh, you can actually adjust the, uh, what we call PLD or TI uh, to non the blood signal. So you get the vaso uh, during the uh, control imaging uh, while the subtraction of label and control you get uh, the ASL. Then you uh, wait 500 milliseconds, you get a T2 bold uh, by using the grace. So you get three together. Uh, this just shows you the paradigm uh, of VASO and the CBF, VASO CBF interleave with bold. Uh, with all this signal, you know, we actually uh, also followed uh, Professor Lu's uh, previous work derive uh, the CMR2, you know, we haven't done the uh, CO2 uh, breathing calibration because it's a little uh, harder to do at 70, uh, but we plan to do it. 
Yeah, so this just again shows you, you know, with uh, finger tapping, you expect a double peak with CVF and the bolt and the vaso, um, you know, you, you, you have a double peak as well, but it's negative. Uh, of course, you can do vaso uh, just for the bolt effects, which is very similar. Yeah, so here uh, comes my fourth question uh, for you guys. Uh, I, I think you must be able to answer this one <laughs> easy. Uh, my question is, uh, what is vaso and why it's negative? Yeah. Um, so this is the profile, uh, you know, using uh, basically CVF. Uh, so we we really see two peak again. Uh, this is very reproducible, uh, and this is positive bold and the negative vaso signal. And you can convert it into CVV. So there's also a double peak in the CVV. Uh, this is actually uh, the blue one is CVV divided by bold. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, CVV. Uh, yeah, so the CVV divided by the bold. Um, yeah, so with this, we can derive the CML to ch change. This is our curve. Uh, it was primary peak at the deep layer another smaller peak at superficial layers. Um, so we looked up, um, you know, the uh, literature again, you know, try to uh, correlate with the uh, cell neural density. Uh, you know, from this paper, uh, it looks like uh, it's, it's more neurons. Uh, the, of course, you know, with the pyramid of neurons, you're really distributing in the deep layers. Uh, um, and uh, there seems to be a little smaller peak in the superficial layer. So we think, you know, uh, this CMR2 uh, results may be correct. Of course, you know, we, we, we need to do more work and uh, ideally maybe with uh, CO2 calibration. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, so now we shift the gear a little bit into uh, dynamic contrast enhanced uh, at the ultra high field. Um, uh, it has been uh, fewer literature. <laughs> I have to dig it a little bit deeper. We, we just started doing it. Uh, yeah, we were not the expert in this area, but I thought uh, it's good to have some discussion <clears throat> uh, with the group. Um, yeah, so this actually, uh, Bill Rooney, very generous, shared these slides with me. Um, essentially, uh, so you you basically, with contrast agent, you detect uh, uh, relaxivity, longitudinal relaxivity rate change, right? So uh, based on this equation, uh, this is the pure cell line. Uh, this is the R1 of the, uh, tissue uh, with uh, macromolecular tissue, uh, this is actually the contrast agent uh, one. Um, so essentially you want to detect the contrast agent change um, with this by measuring this R1. Um, and uh, everything goes down, uh, other relaxivity rate goes down with ultra high field. Um, but the, the interesting thing is, uh, since the uh, tissue R1 goes down more than the contrast agent, and the, essentially you're getting a little bit of gain. Uh, this is empirical kind of simulation by Bill. Uh, it's not as good as ASL. ASL goes like exponential. This is more like a saturation recovery. <laughs> um, so, but you do get a little bit of gain. Uh, for example, with muscle, uh, you get. Um, little large signal change uh, at uh, 70 and also Y matter. Um, and uh, um, so, uh, so DCE is actually um, a little bit uh, uh, more preferred uh, the same reason as I uh, said about ASL, because you know, it's less distortion, very uh, robust in terms of uh, B1, B0 inhomogeneity. Um, and uh, you do have to count, take into account uh, the spatial inhomogeneity B1 uh, effects uh, when you calculate uh, the K trans uh, and the uh, signal change. Uh, this just shows you uh, the T1 mapping, uh, you commonly for uh, DCEMI, 
you do have to take into account uh, the Felipe Angle, which is the B1 uh, <coughs> field effects, uh, as well as, so this is calibration of the blood T1. Um, this uh, is from Rooney again, uh, shows you they, they have a very interesting protocol um, to give uh, gadolinium um, on, <laughs> on the same day, uh, Why also second day the subject will come back for uh, iron oxide nanoparticle ferrohemi, uh, and then they image the third day. Uh, so it's a three day protocol. So this is pre contrast GAT, pre GAT. Uh, this is post GAT. Uh, this is actually uh, post iron oxide um, nanoparticle. Uh, so you can see actually the GAD enhancement uh, looks larger, uh, more obvious, uh, higher contrast with 70, but really not the iron oxide. Um, this is my fifth question. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, and who can tell me uh, the, you know, the half-life uh, of gadolinium and contrast agent and the uh, iron oxide nanoparticle in your body. Um, so uh, yeah, just my guess uh, is basically, you know, the iron is, a, uh, is primary a stronger uh, susceptibility contrast. So it's uh, affect the T2 more than the T1. And you're using a T1 sequence, you know, depending on your TE uh, you know, they are counteracting, right? Because uh, T, uh, T2 uh, is reduced the signal Y T1 is enhanced the signal. So you don't get as much as uh, eye enhancement uh, at the 70 as 3T, but nevertheless, it's very interesting. Uh, this just shows you um, the, uh, the, the protocol, right? So you actually can do a quick uh, DC, DSC with dynamic imaging, but then you can do uh, sparse DCE downpolling uh, to do uh, quantitative T1 mapping. Um, and also you have the subject come back the second day uh, inject uh, iron oxide nanoparticle and the third day you do the post iron. Uh, and the, uh, of course, you know, you can uh, do the immediate uh, contrast enhancement, uh, as I just explained to you, but you can also do the K-trans. Uh, but the K-trans map actually was different uh, in GBM uh, with the gadolinium and also uh, ferromoxetol uh, because they have different molecular weight uh, and uh, it just affects, uh, seems affecting, reflecting different physiology underlying um, and uh, this is our data, uh, we're just starting. Uh, so we always do uh, oblique uh, because we want to cut through the hippocampus. Uh, we want the high resolution hippocampus imaging. Uh, this is 3T, this is 7T. So I think we're getting a high SNR uh, on the majority of the cortex except the um, the lower um, you know, temporal lobe, um, we, we needed we, we didn't use the uh, PTX yet. Uh, so this is still work to do. And uh, this just shows you the, uh, the, the T1 map uh, we get uh, with simple uh, B1 filtering. Uh, we get a pretty uh, homogeneous B1 map. So this is very promising. Again, you know, uh, this is working progress um, and uh, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so dying, the, another technique is, of course, you know, when we talk about perfusion, it's always DSC, right, with the dynamic contrast uh, susceptibility imaging. Um, so, you know, you would imagine uh, DSC has superior performance at ultra high field because you have stronger uh, susceptibility effects, relaxation effect, and they allow you to use maybe reduce the dose, right? Um, but uh, uh, so far, very, very few 70 DSC in my study. Uh, so I actually, I found the one <laughs> by Linda uh, at the, your group. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, so there's certain challenges in terms of quantification. I think that this applies to all the technique at the ultra high field, um, especially, you know, the T2 star relaxivity, it changes uh, between tissue and the, the, um, the, the vessels, right? So they are not a linear relationship <coughs> with the uh, conscious agent concentration. Uh, so you have to really, um, adjust it. Uh, otherwise, you get the different numbers. Um, this is uh, from Bill's group. You know, if you give a regular dose, 0.1 minimal per kg GBC, you get almost double signal change um, at 70 compared to 30. Um, but seems that there's elevated baseline as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so, you know, this is uh, actually Bill's group um, with, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's they, they can get uh, pretty nice um, hovering uh, 2.5 ISO with multiband EPI. Um, so reasonable uh, image quality um, to get the multiple parameters for DSC. And this is Linda's paper. Uh, just shows you um, it is, uh, she actually used a half dose um, compared to 3T, so it's stuttering, um, 0.05 minimal per kg. Um, yeah, so um, anyway, um, so she reported uh, an adjustment uh, of um, this tailing effects. Uh, so uh, with the adjustment, um, still, you know, the 70 numbers seems a little higher uh, compared to the literature uh, of the, you know, 1.5 and 3T uh, DSC PWI. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, I come to <laughs> my conclusion. Uh, so it's a very active, very interesting field. Um, I think ASL has been more active, definitely. Uh, it's um, and uh, uh, it's it's a lot of fun to play with it. I would say. <laughs> so of course you can see, you know, it has due benefits. Um, and uh, uh, I would say, you know, now um, I'm pretty confident. I think uh, 70 Picasso is a reality, not uh, only a potential. Of course, there's still room for optimization. Uh, and and uh, actually, uh, Ultra High Field offers also very good sensitivity for dynamic contrast based uh, MI, right? This, I think this potential probably hasn't been fully realized. Uh, um, yeah, we're also trying to push forward, especially with DCE. Um, and then now uh, I think uh, we are reaching sub-millimeter, right? Um, uh, with especially uh, particularly within a selective region uh, with high sensitivity. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we uh, actually think that uh, Berkeley this week uh, tried to implement our sequence on the Berkeley brain scanner. So we uh, push the resolution further into seven millimeter. Uh, however, you know, um, of course, uh, everybody talk about this. Uh, you need to mitigate this B1, B0 field in homogeneity and the sound limit uh, using all kinds of <laughs> clever ways uh, you can think about. Uh, anyway, I think it's a very exciting field. And uh, so, yeah, so last, I just want to mention, you know, um, yeah, this is my last question <laughs> for you guys. Um, yeah, so we were uh, attended this, uh, you know, there's the art uh, science kind of uh, events at the USC. Uh, so I give uh, some 70 images uh, to the art school students. Uh, this is what they come up with. So uh, it's very nice. It's a laser cut uh, acrylic. Uh, it's a uh, plastic uh, transparent. Uh, you have multiple layers of this tough MRI on top of the SWI. Uh, but actually, my main goal is try to 
ask her to do uh, the perfusion <laughs> presentation, but she couldn't uh, really do it because you know it's like a cloud, right? <laughs> yeah. So my last question is, uh, how do you artistically uh, present perfusion? Yeah, it's an open-ended question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. So that's all my talk, and uh, uh, I, I, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, you can email me and train about your, um, your, your, your size, your, your, <laughs> your, your favorite color for the t-shirts. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, great. Uh, so much, Danny. I'm impressed, especially by the artwork. Uh, in this artwork again, and also this uh, critic artwork, uh, you know, just showed. So um, I guess uh, now it's the Q and A, um, you know, time. So again, uh, uh, feel free to use the Q and A box, and also uh, for people more interested in, uh, uh, I'm more familiar with the chat box. Feel free to use the chat box. Um, so we got the first question, uh, Danny. Can you see the question? Do you want to? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. How restrictive and is SAR to pick up? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, if you we use the CP mode, the, the it's it's not uh, too bad. Of course, we have to go to first level, uh, which is still on the FDA limit. Uh, we don't have to increase TR a lot. Right now, we're using one second labeling duration usually. Yeah. Um, the 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 tricky part is when you use PTX. Then uh, I think there's two parts. One is really because you know the Nova coil they don't give us the uh, VOPs, so there's a very um, restrictive uh, SAR calculation. So that suddenly doubles your uh, SAR for no reason. Uh, so. So yeah, with PTX, so we have to increase the TR. Uh, uh, but I think, you know, if you have your own coil, if you know the coil geometry, you're able to so substantially uh, reduce that SAR. Uh, and also, you know, I think it depends on your uh, shimming algorithm. Uh, you know, if you, you basically balance uh, efficiency with the power, yeah. So. So, so far has been good, I would say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Danny, I was, I was uh, well, very curious. Uh, I, was, I think your laminar results have been very, um, you know, impressive. I was wondering, you know, how long does the protocol take normally uh, for you to get a robust measure if you want to do that? Uh, our protocol is always 10 minutes because, you know, that's okay. usually the tolerance of the subject, but we repeat. So, uh, you know, it, it really depends. Uh, if you want to get more um, statistical power, of course, you want to average more. But usually we, we do no more than four rounds, so like a 40 minutes. Uh, so usually the subject is in there once one hour, right? A little bit over yeah. one hour, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so that's our limit, basically. But we we try to do every scan ten minutes. Oh. Right, right. In ten uh, ten minutes uh, interval. So uh, how many sources uh, can you cover normally? Uh, see, it's how many uh, slices? Uh, yeah, we we you know I showed you um, the ones we show uh, here. Uh, so this is basically what we're getting. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, 25. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, no, five. Yeah, I don't know why it's 25. Uh, it should be an even number, yeah. But anyway, yeah, this is the one we're getting, I think. Uh, it looks like 24. 24, yeah, 24, yeah, 24, yeah, 24, yeah, 24, yeah, 24 is the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, you said you did some uh, finger tapping as well as finger brushing. Did you, mm -hmm. you have a special, I guess, uh, apparatus to do that, a uh, special device for the uh, finger, yeah, touching I think and brushing? Yeah, basically, 
uh, you know, subject self-paced, right? Uh, finger brushing is basically me. <laughs> I, I'm inside using a brush. <laughs> yeah, it's a- Oh, it's a, that's brand new, okay. Yeah, not yet with the device, but yeah, we, we right. just, I, I just did human scanning, so yeah. Right, right, right. So mm -hmm. for all these you presented, uh, uh, I, uh, which, which of them can, can be um, performed already on the clinical scanner? Uh, I mean, the clinical 70 you have. Uh, we basically, this is a clinical scanner. Actually, no. you know, uh, okay. the difference is, uh, you know, the, the, the one TX is actually FDA approved, but the PTX is actually not uh, FDA approved. So it's a dual mode. So you kind of switch, um, you need yeah. to kind of switch back on. But the, the thing we found out is majority time, I, I think the PTX would be favorable. Um, just the coverage. Um, I think other groups uh, have similar uh, experience. And uh, um, I think they, even some clinical sites, they're starting to use almost exclusive PTX. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's a little bit experimental device anyway. You know, there's lots of whips. And also, you know, the whips don't run on the single uh, single channel, uh, so the whips only run on the PTI, which is more like a research mode, right? Research license, right? Um, yeah, so so I think, yeah, I think the FDA label is not that critical um, for this okay. one. And now, of course, it's good to have that, uh, but the, the majority of sites, I think they're also running a lot of mixture of, you know, if they approve then other working progress packages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Feel free to put that in the query box and the chat box. Um, so then I was, uh, I was uh, um, you know, when I see the ferromoxotol scans, you show sure, that's pretty interesting and you said this is a this is a um, this is another from another site right they have a yeah, yeah from oregon yeah from oregon yeah, oh okay Deroni. that's right we can, yeah, we can do that we, we try to do that here but it's very hard to get a protocol approved i guess uh, have you tried the at your site uh no uh, we did a little bit with another group at the ucra um they actually got a i think a ide uh, so yeah, it's it's a little bit. Uh, it depends on um, which uh, institute and the IRB. Sometimes you may uh, need uh, go through FDA. Right. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, so it's sort of like off it's off, off label. label. Yeah, it's yeah, off, off label, label use. use. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So the you have to have a physician uh, practitioner uh, outside to watch the injection. It has to be slow. Right. Uh, so logistically, it's a little bit more like at linear, you just power inject to just do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the size of the kind of lot larger. Being on 70 looks like some um, um, less signal drop or signal decrease because of the T2. But is it, is it is because the, uh, the 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 molecule is actually a lot larger? So if the blubbery barrier, is yeah, I think that that's there. also yeah, that's that right. could be true. Yeah, that could be true. Yeah, so they right. show that it's different um, different permeability. Uh, also, the region seems so different. Right, uh, you're right. right. Yeah, I'm just guessing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because I thought, especially for the, I think the, for the 24 hour, that's pretty interesting, right? So you can look at uh, some sort of a microglial activity. Yeah, really yeah it's a high yeah, it's nice. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think for that 17, maybe you can use the SWI and will give you a stronger signal. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you will see a lot of grooming effects if you really do the oh, okay. So the, I think uh, and when I use doing it, um, because it's just so strong. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do multi-echo, I guess you can correct for that. I mm -hmm. see uh, Hacky's group did something. With yeah, okay, I, guess I see I, the chat box. The oh, answer. chat box, yes. <laughs> yeah, the correct answer 11.7 11. 7 at the nearest thing. Uh, right. 
And yeah, ten, CMR 10.5, the second, uh, but they are scanning human. I think 11.7, they hasn't scanned human yet uh, because they need a safety. Uh, HS, nobody knows what is worse than what is TI foresight. <laughs> nobody answered that. Uh, super selective single circular individual yeah i think that's roughly right what is vaso of course you shouldn't know what is vaso <laughs> <laughs> okay good gadolinium yeah it's about 1.5 for gadolinium fair moxto is 10 times it's 15 hours yeah okay we we have a few people you can if if Jing, you can write down their name, we can contact. Yeah, we'll save uh, we we'll save all the chat uh, record, mm -hmm. and then we we'll, we'll send you that. Um, I guess before before I let you go, uh, then you have uh, one last question because I thought, uh, you know, you mentioned in, in Linda's paper that they show that uh, you know at seventy uh, for gallium DSC, right? You can actually use mm -hmm. half dose uh, yeah, to yes, get so that's approximately exactly the, the same effect. Yeah. So as I, I saw to me, that seems to be a, a big advantage uh, doing that as 370 compared to 3T. But uh, as it showed, there are not many uh, sites actually doing 70 DSC. So what was the reason? What do you think? I think that the probably, you know, the EPIs do get, you get a lot of um, distortions. And I think the coverage in the inferior is um, not great. Okay. Probably cannot get hovering um, very nicely. Um, right. Yeah. So it's more general, uh, I guess, the uh, uh, imaging image quality uh, kind of issue. Right. So quantification. Get, yeah. I think it's, right. it's availability. Right. Um, right. Okay. I guess uh, if no more questions. Uh, so um, I actually also uh, create and try to create a survey uh, for all the questions Danny just asked. So I guess if you leave your see the survey, feel free to submit additional answers. We'll record everything, and then uh, as Danny said, uh, uh, said we'll send you a nice T-shirt. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay, again, uh, thank you everyone. Um, you know for uh, for coming. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week. Uh, no, 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 not next week. Next, next month uh, for the next talk. Danny, thank you again uh, for thank the you. Spot, for the talk thank and you. all these. Uh, thank you for the audience. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see you, Danny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye bye.